Hello everyone and welcome to the video for using Screen 4. Screen 4 will end up being the general replacement for Screen Designer and will be part of the Mach 3 package included with the importer uh, and, the and the program itself. I've started up the program here and I'm going to go through a few of the features on it. You'll see on my screen that I have a black area around my window. This is because I've selected a 1024 window. And when you start a new document in screen 4, you'll see you're given a selection between the standard 1024 by 768, 800 by 600, 640 by 480, and a selection for custom in which you can set it to whatever size you wish. Its default values in these D in these edit boxes is for your uh, desktop size itself. My desktop runs in 1920 by 1200, uh, so it just appears there. Your numbers will vary. I've selected a 1024 screen, and when I do that, you'll see I have a black area, and this is because my screen is larger than a 1024 screen. Some of the controls are missing that you're used to. You'll see along the top here, in addition to the standard windows, edit, paste, and clipboard controls, which are functional in screen 4, uh, we have an image kill button, a uh, tab screen button, a colors button, the usual nudge buttons for aligning our, but our controls on the screen to each other, and a new control called grid. Uh, the grid button sets a granularity. You can see here it defaults to 3 pixels. However, I'll, as an example, I'll show it to you with 30 pixels and turning on the grid. To drop a control, simply go over and click the control once for the control types and then right click anywhere on the windowing screen. The control drops onto the screen and is movable as before with your mouse. Now you'll see that this DRO as I'm moving it is jumping by several pixels at a time. This is an alignment grid that we just turned on with this function and it's jumping 30 pixels at a time at the moment. And This allows us to have a much easier time if we were to drop more DROs on the screen to line them up. As you can see I can very quickly line them up exactly and they are evenly spaced because of this 30 pixel jump. You can turn off the grid at any time just by specifying it off. You'll notice there are no screen selection buttons or screen number buttons in screen 4. Uh, screen 4 requires you to have screen selection buttons on screen if you want to switch screens otherwise you are simply locked to the one screen that you have. Let's show you an example of that. We're going to, to click buttons. And I'm going to put a button on the screen, which if we double click it, we'll get our control setup screen. This dialog is the same for all controls. When it comes up, you will see that there are grayed out sections, and the grayed out sections you do not have to use. So the only things you need to fill in, and you don't need to fill them in all typically, is the available selections to you, the ones that are not grayed out. As we can see, this button I have, it defaults to a system function, but it's empty because you haven't selected one yet. By clicking the drop down arrow, we can click any of the usual functions from Mach 3, or go to the bottom and select OEM code. You'll see the radio button has switched over to OEM code, and as any of those of you that have used uh, Designer in the past know, entering an OEM code from 1 to 100 selects a screen number. So in this case let's put screen number 2 as this screen and we'll change the button text to reflect that by typing screen 2 as an example. Now one thing about a screen selector button is that you should make it available to be displayed on all screens. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be a persistent control, however it's a little difficult for you to test them without it being um, on all screens, so we're going to select display on all screens. There are no persistent uh, screens on this program, just persistent controls. So now if we push the screen 2 button we can see our controls disappear because we're now on screen 2, which begs the question of how to get back to screen 1. In this case we'll just drop another button, move it up here, double click it to open it, and we will type an OEM code function of 1 for screen 1. Screen 1 is your first screen 
on these screens. Now I'm purposely not going to check the displays on all screens on this one, but I will set a, a text saying screen one on the button. Now you can see we have screen one and screen two. But because I didn't tell screen one to appear on all screens, it only appears on screen two. When I hit screen one, we flick to screen one and the screen one button is gone. This sounds like a wonderful thing, and it can be for some screen designs. However, your problem is that we cannot edit that button anymore because when we click it, we can only view it on screen two. The second we try to double click it, the first click takes us to screen one, and there is no such button on screen one, so we cannot edit it. For that reason, there is a shift key override. Pressing the shift key at any time and holding it down while clicking disables a button's function. And the only button function in Mach 4 screen is switching screens. So if you get a lost or orphaned button, hit the shift key, double click it, and you can come up and fix your mistake where we should have selected displays on all screens. You can use a, uh, you can set a hotkey if you wish. If one is already set and reads minus one, it means one is not set. A minus one hotkey is the same as having no hotkey. But by clicking on select hotkey, we will be asked to type a key. If I hit a key, the key code will go in and be stored. I'm going to turn it off for this screen. Now that we've seen how to create screens in basic. Here we've created screen one with four DROs and screen two has nothing on it but if I was to put some objects on the screen uh, screen two has those, screen one has the other objects. So you can see how a Mach 3 screen comes together. Now that we've seen the basic operation let's load Mach 3's screen set. Uh, before we do that however I want to show you one menu option which is defaults. Go to the defaults menu item to select the location of your Mach 3. Um, this is important if you haven't located it in the standard Mach 3 folder because it needs to know where to find bitmaps and such. The most important part of a new screen designer is the ability to load old screens. So you'll notice there are very few new features in this program. One of them is that you must set the default location of Mach 3. So we've done that. Let's open up a screen set with open. You can see that on my computer it has defaulted to Mach 3. I'm going to pick a uh, screen set, the standard one. I'm not going to. Alright, so we've loaded a 1024 screen set from the Mach 3 folder. You can see this is the standard screens. In order to select between various screens, you can click on the screen selection buttons, which are part of the screen sets themselves. In the past, it was difficult with bitmaps to select objects. You can see, for example, if I click the error bar here, nothing appears to be happening, or the profile bar. It's because the bitmap is hiding it. This has been a problem in the past. So we have an image kill button. And when we select image kill, the bitmap disappears. And I can now select uh, various objects. Any object which is displayed on all screens will not show you framing rectangles and will not allow you to move it. In order to move a what used to be a persistent object, such as this file name box, we would have to turn off displays on all screens, at which time we can select it and move it, and then turn back on the displays on all screens, which makes it again non-selectable. This is so you don't accidentally move an object uh, which belongs to all the screens at once. However, other objects such as this G-code button you can see frames when we click it and we're free to move it. You can turn the bitmaps on and off to see how things are matching up very quickly just by toggling the button. This gives you easy access to setting an object in relation to a bitmap. For example, the reference all home, you can see I'm beginning to hit the edge of the G-code window so I would want to move it back over and this can be hard to do with some areas when you have bitmaps on the screen. Uh, another button we have here is the tab button which takes us to our tab screen. It removes the um, 
objects which normally display on all windows. The tab window is considered to be special and in order to give you easy access to edit it, uh, all those objects are removed. Here you can see on this area of my screen we have some orphaned objects from the screen creation process uh, which normally do not show up on your system but nonetheless they do exist. The black areas here I use as a scratch pad when I'm designing a screen. Uh, we also have a colors window. Oh, first of all, hitting the tab button will take you back to the screen you were on. We have a colors window, which allows you to set the colors of uh, the objects which you could set in the old screen designer. So it's a G-code background. We can simply select a new color and say OK, and we have a very ugly yellow window. The uh, object nudgers, if I go to my settings screen, I'll display those for you. Uh, sometimes you want to line up objects, so by holding the control key down on your keyboard, you can select more than one object at once, and hitting one of the alignment tools will put things into alignment, telling them to evil, evenly spread, uh, should spread them evenly throughout their range. The uh, vertical spread object has a bug at the moment which moves things around, which I'll be fixing up shortly. Select all three objects and you can move them at once to line up. Uh, the edit box with copy and paste and cut are all functional, as is the uh, delete key on your keyboard. If you select an object, you can hit the delete key and that object will go away. Well, that's pretty much all that you need to know about screen 4 and its differences from the uh, old screen designer you should be able to do pretty much anything with it that you could do in the old screen designer with the exception of editing a script and again that will appear in the next version of Mach 3 editing on the fly uh, from your loaded screen. The panels button here at the bottom is not yet used it's for future use and I'll be adding more uh, control types and graphics uh, gadgets and gizmos and whiz bangs for you over time uh, but at the moment, you're limited to your normal selections. This screen designer should just be somewhat easier to use than what you're used to, and hopefully uh, will allow you to do things uh, more happily without getting upset at it, such as I have in the past. The old screen designer was written very early on. It was necessary for me to uh, write it before I could write Mach 2, and as a result, it has not been updated in quite some time. Uh, so screen 4 is its facelift and uh, hopefully brings us up to an area where you'll be comfortable creating your own screens. That's it for now. Thanks.